my name is Tony Durrant. Um, I've been asked if I can repair four radios. The gentleman who owns these radios said, well, I'd like to learn about repairing radios, but he said, I don't know where to start. So I said, well, you know, we could get together in my workshop. We can go through it together if you like. But of course, this damn virus that's about makes this awfully difficult. So at that point, I decided that what I would do is try and make some YouTube videos showing through my thought processes, showing how to repair them, um, which would help him and it may help some other people as well. So I thought, first of all, I want to just tell you what radios I've got and what my approach is going to be. Um, what this video is not, it's not about this is the fault, therefore the problem is this. What it's going to be is to try and help you to understand how to fault find some of the kit that you'll need, which isn't terribly extensive, um, and try and get you to work your way through it in the same way that I'm going to work my way through it, and hopefully I'm going to end up with these four radios in working condition, but we will see. What you need to understand first of all is that these three radios, it's a Bush DAC-90A and a Bush DAC-90 and a Bush VHF ATC is what I would call one class of radio and this Decker DMR88 is another class of radio. Now what makes those different? Well the point is that this radio has got an isolation transformer in it and it makes the world a difference in the way that you start to fault find. It's an isolation transformer, it runs on AC only, all these three run on DC. This radio therefore can earth the chassis. It means that if you want to connect an oscilloscope to it and you connect your earth to the chassis, that's absolutely fine. But you do have to take great care with these AC-DC radios. What happens is one side of the mains is connected directly to chassis and when these were manufactured, um, people were not too worried about whether it's the live or the neutral it's connected to chassis which is a bit of a concern. So if you then plug this radio in and you come along with your scope and you connect the earth on the chassis and the chassis is live, well, say no more. You don't need want to do that. So one of the things you need to do with these three radios, first of all, is to make sure that it's the neutral connected to chassis. And if you're going to work on it, I'd recommend the use of an isolation transformer. Now, I'm fortunate, I've got an isolation transformer um, and I just use it as a matter of course. I don't need it for this one, but actually if I've got it, why not use it? Um, so anyway, the first radio I'm going to look at is this Decker one. I was told that this radio was working fine and then suddenly there was a bit of a pop and it didn't work anymore uh, and also there is something leaking all right now that's what we know about it so where do you start you know when you get a radio do you plug it in what do you do firstly for me the answer is no you don't plug it in all right what i want to do is to take the chassis out get it all set up on the bench but also you need to get the circuit as well now most of the time you can download the circuit for more or less nothing on the web. It might cost you a couple of pounds, but not a great deal. Uh, and I've got the circuit for this one here. Why do you need the circuit? Well, it tells you a lot about it. Um, you can start fault finding. You do need the circuit. Even if you're not that good with circuits, get hold of the circuit. It tells you, tells you quite a lot. So with this circuit, I can tell that, that this is an isolated radio, as I said earlier. How do I know that? Well, the circuit shows me an isolation transformer. That's the first thing. The second thing is all the valve heaters are in parallel, whereas with the AC-DC radio, they're all in series. OK, why is that important? Well, it means that when you do eventually turn it on, what you're looking for is all the valves glowing, whereas if they're all in series, of course, if any of them were failed, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see any of them go. Um, so I'm look, I can check each one individually to see whether see whether they're glowing or not. Um, that's the first thing, um, and then you know just take it from there. So that's the next thing. I'm going to start 
taken this radio apart and um, lay it out on the chassis, show you on, on, the, on the bench. I'm going to show you how I've got it set out and we can work from there. Okay, so I've got things set up on the bench. Um, I've got an isolation transformer here, which you don't need for doing this type of radio, but as I've got it, I like to use it. It means then, you know, I can earth the chassis. So my chassis is earthed, I like to do that. It means then that if I've got a scope or anything and something goes wrong, current's going to go through that earth wire and not through the scope. Um, the other thing is I've done, I don't know if you can see this, let me just see whether you can. I've just made a slight extension lead here for the speaker, uh, just a couple of crocodile clips so I can run the thing. But most importantly I've got in here a thing called a lamp limiter. Now this is not my idea, I can't claim credit for this, but it's quite a clever one. What it is, is that when you switch this radio on, you don't know if it's going to go bang, you don't know if it's going to take a lot of current. Um, but what the idea is, if you put a 100 watt light bulb in series with the mains, a 100 watt light bulb, the filament resistance is something like about uh, 40 ohms when it's cold, but when it's hot it's much higher. So if you turn the radio on with that lamp in series, well, the radio isn't going to take very much current. You're not going to drop very many volts across the bulb, and at least uh, it will protect it if something does go wrong. If it starts to draw current, then you'll get a lot of volts across the light bulb. The light bulb gets hot, and you can't actually draw too much current. And then when you're happy that things are going, there's a little switch here which just short circuits the bulb. Um, it's very, very simple. I'll put the schematic up. You can download it. You know, it cost me, what, about five or six pounds to make it. Well worth doing, I think, because uh, you don't quite know what's going to happen when you first switch on a radio. Uh, anyway, uh, let's switch on and see what happens. Now, what I do know is that when something is leaking, I should give you a, a close-up shot of this if I can, but there is a capacitor in here which is very dodgy. It looks like it's leaking to me, but I'm not sure. I can't see that, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I want to know what's going to happen when I turn on. Now, what I'm first thing I'm going to check for when it when it does go is are all the valves alight? Remember, these valve heaters are in parallel, so if one isn't working, then I should be able to detect it. The filament's open circuit, therefore you need another valve. But let's have a go and see what happens. So my isolation transformer is on. What I will do is put this onto medium wave band because I haven't got an FM aerial plugged in, but if something happens and I, and I do get some sound out of it, I should be able to scan across and should be able to get something. Um, let's see what happens. So radio turned on. Uh, that's the on off. Yeah, turned on. So this is my on. Let's see what happens. Uh, now, did you see the light bulb come on and go off again? Now, what that's doing is when the filaments of the of the valves are, are cold, it takes a bit more current. So it takes current and then lets go again. So what I'm looking for now is to see if any valves are alight. And it's a little bit hard in this light, so this might go a bit dim. But I'm just going to turn the light out and see see if I can see and I can see I can see all the valves are alight which is a good thing just gonna put the light back on but what's worrying me now I'm going to turn off in a sec that is glowing which means it's starting to take a lot of current and I'm not hearing any sound I did hear a pop when I turned it off I wouldn't really expect that light bulb to be glowing that bright. So I'm now thinking, do you know what, I think there's some, something going on here. I think we need to take a look underneath. Okay, I know I'm going to be out of shot for the minute, but it doesn't matter. I wanted to show you the radio. Um, have a look at this, folks. Have a look at this. Two capacitors, somebody's fitted. So that leaking capacitor, which I saw on the front, uh, somebody has been doing some work on this radio and if I look at the circuit there is a capacitor so I just switched off now let me do that there is a metal can capacitor and it's actually got three capacitors in it and it show, shows me that on the circuit 
Um, it's three 32 mic caps and somebody has replaced two of them. So I'm wondering what's going on now. Uh, anyway, what the, what the schematic shows me is it gives me some voltages on those three capacitors. So I think that's probably the next thing. What I should do is measure those voltages and let's start having a look at some of the DC conditions. Uh, at the minute I'm going to switch on with the light bulb in series but to actually get accuracy I really should short circuit but it depends how bright it glows because it is taking a lot of current this, this thing so let's give it a go. So I'm on the first point now. There goes the light bulb coming on, that's all right. Right, volts are coming up now. Of course the valve is warming up. Two hundred and eighty, let's just close that then. Three hundred and fifty, but it's going down. C60, I've got a 336, let's move on to the next one, C59, is 262 roughly, let's move on to the next one which is C53, Oh, something's gone wrong with my meter. It does that now and again. I must have pressed the hold. Hold on. C53, that's 221. C53 is 221. Right, let's just turn off a moment and have a little think. So, the values are wrong. Right, I mean the values are wrong, there's no doubt about that. So let's try and work out uh, what the current should be in R26 and R25. So let's say should be IR26 should be 360 minus 310 equals that 50, 50 volts across 1K is 50 milliamps. And then the current in R25 should be 310 minus 240 equals 70 divided by 2.7K should be 26 milliamps. But what we've actually got is something rather different. Let's see. What we've actually got, the current in R26 is uh, what are we are there? 336 minus 262. So the 74 volts across there divided by 1k is 74 milliamps. Current's much too high in that. I R25 is 262 divided by 226, that's 36 volts, divided by 2.7k is 13 milliamps. Current is too low in that. So what does that tell you? It means that the current going down into the output transformer is significantly higher than it should be. It should be 50 minus 26, which is 24 milliamps. And actually what it is, is 74 minus 13, is actually 61 milliamps. Question is, where is it going? So what we have to do now, is we're gonna pull out EL84 valve, the output valve, and once we do that, then there should be no current going down that branch, which means the current in R26 and R25 should be the same. Right, let's do that. V5 removed. Here we go. Let's pull, this, pull it out. 
Okay, valve's out now. Let's put my switch back on. Right, let's turn back on. Uh, why is it not going on? Yes, it is. Give me a moment. C60, I'm getting... Oh, it's even lower now. Oh, hang on. Let me just close the switch. Go back to where we were. Well, it's definitely up. 368 volts. C59. is 308 what's going down 30 blimey it's really going down 286 i'm going to turn off i'm worried i'm worried okay the point is if on c53 that was going down then something is going wrong. It's either going down the output transformer, but it can't be, so therefore it's going down a capacitor, and I would expect them to get what warm, but they're not, which is a bit odd. Oh! Ah, the original capacitor is getting warm. I wonder... I can see what's happened. Whoever's done this repair, where they've replaced... C59, they haven't disconnected the old capacitor. So the old capacitor is getting warm and that's why these voltages are wrong. Right, okay, I've now got to go and disconnect that, do a little bit of soldering and then we'll come back and we'll measure some more voltages. Let's see how we get on. Okay guys, um, moment of revelation here. I've just started to disconnect things that's that's the replacement capacitor somebody has done and I've just measured these two resistors and um, one of them should be 1k which is that one the other one should be 2.7k look I mean it's a bit black you can't really tell what it is but I've just measured it and it's 1k and it doesn't look original so I think somebody has said oh the volts are a bit low uh, oh, I'll reduce the resistor a bit so I've got a We've got to replace that with a 2.7k. The real reason that the volts were low is because they hadn't disconnected the dead capacitor in the first place. So we've got to replace that. 2.7k, it says 2.5 watt, or 2 watt. I like to put a bigger one in if I can. Um, and then we need to put it all back together. But I haven't got those bits, so I'm going to order that resistor. I'll also order uh, another capacitor because if two of those are dead in that can, Let's not muck about. Let's put the third one on. So let's do that. When I've got those bits, well, then we'll put it back together and see how we get on. Okay, I've had a bit of a chance to work on this radio now, and uh, I've done a bit of rewiring inside. I'm just going to show you what I've done. Um, this is this old triple capacitor which was leaking. Uh, I remember they put the wrong somebody put a wrong resistor in a 1K resistor. So what I've done is they had uh, there's, there's a lot of lot of holes in this chassis so I've managed to get a complete new piece of tag strip in there because I wanted to disconnect this old capacitor and connect it to something and I needed to just just needed some connection so I got a tag strip I've managed to bolt it in there so there's the 1k resistor which is now correct that's the 2.7k which was they had a 1k in there incorrectly as we discovered uh, and then these are the two replacement capacitors which were already there and this is the third one which I've now added. So the next thing to do in a minute is we're going to switch on and we're going to see whether these voltages are anywhere near correct. Okay, you might not be able to see what I'm doing here but uh, you'll, get, you'll get the gist of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure these voltages now on C60, C59 and C53 and the schematic tells me it should be 360 volts, 310 and 240. But first I'm going to switch on with my light bulb in series because I really want to know uh, 
whether anything nasty is going to happen. So let's do that. Okay, light bulb in series and turn on. I can see a light bulb, so that's good. So I'll just wait for the valves to warm up. Okay, volts are coming up now. I can see my light bulb is glowing a little bit, but I'm going to have to short circuit that now to get anything like the correct voltages. So, but it doesn't seem to be getting any brighter particularly, I don't think. Let's go for it. And I have got going down a bit but anyway 355 should be 360 let's move on to the next one and that's 297 it should be 310 a bit low but maybe it's all right oh hang on I can hear something. And 240 I should get and I'm getting 247. Well the other thing I've done is I have plugged in a little bit of an FM aerial here just in case we get anything and the same is that it will so I'm going to put this on VHF. Oh I can hear something. Um, yeah that's true Sarah thank you for that and from Kate I turned 60 in early February as a 59-year-old, I have that's, this summer taken that's encouraging. cycling, which is so freeing and exhilarating. But I've also just started something. I can't... Excellent. Right. Let's try another wave band. Let's try medium wave. See if we can get anything on that. I think the switch is a bit dicky. We might need to spray something in that. I can't seem to get much on medium wave. Let's try long wave. Something on long wave there. Let's just try medium wave again. I suspect the switch. It's definitely a bit, bit iffy, so I'm going to try and spray that. Anyway, let's turn off for a moment, and we'll need to turn it over to have a look at that. Okay, this is going to be hard for you to see, but here is the waveband switch, and it's going to be very, very difficult to clean, and we can only do what we can do. Um, you know, you can't don't start disconnecting wires or anything like that. All you can do is to try and put some switch cleaner on it and do what you can do. You, know, you want to try and get at all the contacts if you can and move it as you do it. Obviously make sure it's switched off. Uh, and just keep doing as much as that as you can on all the contacts if possible. Just try and work it in. There's normally a main contact in the centre of these things. Sometimes you can't even see where you're spraying it. But And then just make sure everything is... Just leave it to dry before you switch on. Yeah, it might be worth leaving five minutes or so. Just keep working it in. Okay, right, let's I'll leave that to dry and we'll come back in a bit. Well it's all back together now uh, and it's all working nicely. The only other things that I've done to it is um, 
I've just cleaned the volume control a bit. It was just a bit crackly. Again, just spray some switch cleaner in that. And I've replaced the Y capacitor. Now, if you don't know about X and Y capacitors, it's very easy. An X capacitor is one that is put right across the live and neutral of the mains. And a Y capacitor goes between live and earth, and then another one between neutral and earth. Now, not all radios have these. Some only have X capacitors, some have Y capacitors. This radio has just got one Y capacitor between live and earth. And I'll put a photograph of it up now, and the one I'm going to replace it with. Now, the reason that I always replace an X and Y capacitor if they've got them is they are notoriously unreliable. They are, you know, they see the mains voltage and, you know, they, they, they just wear out and sometimes they can go off bang. But if you buy a modern one now, which is X rated or Y rated, it's to do with the failure mode and, uh, you know, just, just do it as a matter of course. It, it's very easy. And that's it. That's the only thing I've done to it. And uh, I'll just show it working now. Uh, I've got it on, got an FM at the moment. That's Radio 3, I think. Oh, just got to the end of something. Hang on, bear with me. I believe in God. Oh, we are. The Father Almighty. That's Radio 3. Uh, and if I go to medium wave, uh, Radio. Reception's pretty poor here, but that's Radio 5. And then if I go a long wave, I should be able to get radio four. There we are, this long wave. Anyway, turn it down. Very, very happy with that. That went quite well. Uh, it's turned a radio which didn't work into something which does work. So I'll put all the documents up. Uh, you can have a look at them. And uh, I'll be back with some more radios to repair. You know, do subscribe if you want to and communicate. Tom, tell me whether this is useful, whether it's not useful, what you'd like to see. Uh, I'm going to be pressing on repairing more radios, putting more videos up. Bye for now.